All right, today we're going to move on to the next section and the next transformation in our chapter, which is going to talk about reflections. Before we get to what reflections are, a couple of things to review. When we graph horizontal and vertical lines, it's important to know what the equations look like, what the lines look like, because as we reflect, we're going to try to re or reflect across different lines. So with horizontal lines, okay, horizontal lines are going to be of the form y equals some number. So in the graph below, you see, for instance, like y equals 1. We go to 1 on the y-axis right here, and then everywhere we go, y has to stay equal to 1. So that's why we have a horizontal line going in either direction from that point. Or we have y equals negative 3. So we go to negative 3 on the y-axis down here, and we draw a line in the horizontal direction both ways. Again, because y has to equal negative 3 no matter where we go. Now, make sure you are aware that while we say y equals is a horizontal, if I say the y-axis, that changes things because the y-axis is actually this vertical line here down the middle. So be really careful when you're looking at the problems, whether you're talking about the y-axis, which is vertical, versus y equals, which is a horizontal. So you go to that point on the y-axis and go across the axis. Same thing happens with vertical lines. So with vertical lines, we have <clears throat> the form x equals some number. So like when we say x equals 2, on the x-axis, which is this horizontal axis right here, we go to positive 2 right here. And then x always has to equal that. So no matter where I go, x has to stay at 2. So that's why we have this vertical line going straight up and down from that point. Or, like we have x equals negative 4. So for negative 4, we go to negative 4 on the x. And then we have that vertical line straight up and down, straight from that point. So when we're given the lines, we have to make sure we know where to graph so that we can reflect accurately with our given figure. As far as reflections go... <coughs> Reflections are transformations that use a line, kind of like a mirror. So what we should see is a mirror image of our figure on either side of the line. The line that we reflect across is called the line of reflection. So if we look at the picture below, we start with triangle ABC here, and then we're going to reflect it across this line that we have going right through the middle there. When we reflect, again, it's like a mirror image. So we see that mirror image on the opposite side in red there, and notice when we reflect, we use that prime notation again to denote the image. So A prime, B prime, and C prime. A couple of things to note here. If a point lies on the line that we want to reflect across, then that point is not going to move anywhere. It's going to stay right where it's at. So A and A prime in this case are the same point. The other thing that's really important to note is that when we reflect across the line, the distance from each point to that line of reflection should be identical. So B to the line of reflection should be the same distance as B prime to the line of reflection. So what that's going to allow us to do is when we go to actually reflect, we can use that to just count. As I go across the line, how far away am I on one side? That's how far I need to go away on the other side. So if we look at an example here, we have point P plotted at 3, 4. We want to reflect it across the line x equals negative 1. So again, x equals, we go to point, or negative 1 on the x-axis, and then we draw our vertical line from that point. So that's where that black dotted line is coming in. If I want to reflect across that line, point P is currently on the right. I need to move it to the left. So I need to figure out, well, how far do I move it? So P is currently 1, 2, 3, 4 units to the right, which means when I reflect, it needs to end up 4 units to the left. So then P prime is going to end up right there. So P was at 3, 4. P prime ended up at negative 5, 4. And again, with these reflections, just like with translations, we might be required to give the image points. So make sure you know how to uh, tell where those points end up. More often than not, we're not just going to be reflecting a single point across a line. We're going to be reflecting an entire image. So what's the image of triangle ABC if we reflect across the x-axis? 
So the x-axis, and every time you reflect, I want you to draw the line of reflection. So highlight it on the graph so I know you know where you're supposed to be reflecting. So right now, we're going across the x-axis, which is right here. So we draw or highlight that line. That's going to be part of the grading process. I'm going to look, do you have the actual line graphed on your picture? <clears throat> so we got our x-axis. All of my points are currently above the line. So when I go to reflect, they're all going to have to end up below. So again, it just becomes a matter of counting. So A is currently 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units above. So I need to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units below. So there's going to be A prime. C is currently one unit above the line, so I need to move C one unit below. And so there's going to be C prime. B is currently four units above the line, so I'm going to move it four units below. And we get B prime. And then from there, we just connect our dots, we have our image. Again, if it asks for you to record the points, then you just simply say, like, A prime is at negative three, negative five, C prime is at zero, negative one, and so on. So that's the reflecting across the x-axis there. Now if we take that same figure and reflect it across the y-axis, so now we're changing up the, the axis a little bit. So if I go across the y-axis, <clears throat> again, I highlight the axis of rotation. So I'm going to go straight down here is my y-axis. Now when I go to reflect this, some of my graph or some of my pre-image is on the left, some of it's on the right, one of the points is exactly on. So when I go to reflect, point A, for instance, is on the left side currently, which means when I reflect, it needs to end up on the right. So if I count, it's one, two, three units to the left. So A prime needs to go one, two, three units to the right. B is currently on the right side of the line, so I need to reflect it across to the left. So again, we count, it's one, two, three, four units right. So I go one, two, three, four units left, there's B prime. Now C is actually located on the line, so we talked about a couple slides ago. If a point is on the line, then it stays exactly where it is. So C prime is actually going to be right where C is. And then again, we just connect our dots. There's our reflected image. Okay. When we move the line of reflection, <clears throat> so in this case we're saying reflect across the line y equals negative 1. So on my graph, I go to negative 1 on the y-axis, and then I make my horizontal line in either direction. So y equals is a horizontal. So from here, all of my points are currently above. I'm going to move them all below. So b is currently two units above. So I move it two units below. And there's b prime. a is currently four units above the line. So I'm going to go four units below. And we get a prime. d is the same way. So we get D prime, C is two units above, so we go two units down to get C prime. And then we just connect our dots to get our reflected image. Again, if they ask for the image points, we can go ahead and record those. A prime, for instance, is at negative two, negative five. B prime is at negative four, <clears throat> negative three, and so on. So you can do C prime and D prime accordingly. If we reflect across a vertical line, so here we have x equals negative 1. So when we reflect across x equals negative 1, we go to negative 1 on the x. And then that's going to be a vertical line because we've got to go against the axis. So we get this vertical line in either direction here. So that's what I want to reflect across. As far as reflecting then, each point has to end up on the exact opposite side. So A is currently on the left. It's two units to the left, so I'm going to move it two units to the right to make A prime. B is also two units left, so I'm going to move it two units right to create B prime. And then C is actually on the right side, so I'm going to move it to the left one unit <clears throat> and get C prime. And then when we connect the dots, we get our reflected image. And then again, we can record the points from there. A prime is at one negative one. B prime is at 1, 4, and so on. So with that, you should be able to work on the worksheet for today. As you work through the worksheet, if you have any questions, make sure you ask, either email, ask in class, whatever you need to do there. And then also check the answer key on Google Classroom when it comes out to get you any uh, additional help in getting the questions correct.